So I made this loader, and when I was making it, I bought the, pl the plans from PF Engineering. I couldn't find a lot of videos out there on how to do this. And I think with the plans from PF Engineering, even with some, some experience fabricating, it's pretty hard to do. And I wanted to just run through this loader, what it has, lessons I've learned. Maybe it can help somebody else out. So let's see. The plans do include plenty of details about the supplies to buy, how to pick the, uh, um, how to pick the right hydraulic pump, how to get the right pulleys, um, cylinders, etc. Uh, what it doesn't really include is all the things you kind of have to learn along the way. And so I suppose I'll start with one of the biggest failures I had um, was I didn't attach it firmly enough to the frame. So after doing all of the work of building this thing, getting it up and running, I ended up breaking it uh, right off of the frame, which was not good. What happened is these cross members here, uh, I had put on with a somewhat smaller piece of hardware and I went over a bump and uh, that's a lot of pressure on that hardware. It actually sheared both of the bolts, which is not good. Um, on the PF Engineering plans, there's a lot of talk about the bushings, uh, and they link to some places that you can get bushing stock. That's what, that's what this is right here. Um, so this is a one inch outer diameter, half inch inner diameter. And for me anyway, the, the regular hot rolled half inch rod did not fit in here. So I ended up having to use my lathe and machine that down so that it fit with reasonable tolerances. Um, one of the things you have to figure out for your own situation is not only how to mount the, the boom arms, but also how to get the pulleys hooked up correctly, uh, or at least in some way that works for your particular situation. Uh, I had a heck of a problem with the plumbing. It was a pain in the butt to find all of the right pieces that fit together in the right way with the filter. And as you see here, I have a, a CPVC fitting on the non-pressure side. Uh, I had to learn all about hydraulics here. So I didn't know anything to start out. You end up making a tank out of this boom arm with a little hole to relieve pressure and so you don't create a vacuum. Uh, and you have to weld it pretty darn well because otherwise you'll end up with leaks, which I did have and I had to rebuild uh, that tank. When I got this valve and went to hook it up, I really had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but what I've learned is it's not all that complicated. So in this setup, here's how it goes. Out of the bottom of the tank, we have the suction side, which goes in here through the filter, down and into the gazenta side of the pump. The pulley here spins and pumps out to the pressure side, which comes up here into the input of the valve on this side. The valve doesn't come with any useful instructions. Uh, so you're just supposed to know how this works. So in, in this particular valve, I just have two directions. I guess they come in some with, with four directions, uh, but in, in my case, you push up this way, this way and it puts pressure into the side that goes up. And then the other direction is the side that goes down. This one is just for the, the tilt of the bucket. And this one is the up and down of the, of the, the boom. Running the hydraulic hoses, was an absolute mystery to me. I didn't know how these were to work, but again, as with the valve, it's not all that complicated. Uh, what we do is we feed into, let me hop over here. We come out of the valve and there are T's on each side. So this is, this is a dual acting cylinder. So to raise the cylinder, we come into here and then this hose will feed around to the opposite side on the other cylinder with the same direction. Same thing for the other direction, the, the pushing down of this cylinder. Um, that will feed all the way around. I also learned the hard way that you really need to keep these out of the way because at one point I snagged 
the uh, onto the front of the winch, I got the hydraulic hose caught, which you really don't want to do. Use a high quality Teflon tape, use plenty of it, and tighten it down a decent amount. If you don't have it tightened down enough, it will leak. On my other tractor here, I have, as you can see, larger front wheels. These used to be on the tractor with the loader, uh, but unfortunately, that didn't work out because what would happen is over on the, the valve side, when I would turn, it would end up getting caught behind the backside of, of this pipe here. There's a lot of things on this build where you have to be very careful in the way things fit. Another example is right here. In these cross braces, this is mounted up to the frame, but as you see, I barely get past the hood uh, and barely get up into here to the support for the tower. The PF Engineering plans have a lot of details about how to mount up the weights, uh, creating forms and casting concrete with rebar in it so that you can set those on the back as a counterweight. You absolutely need a counterweight. Um, I, I can't put any weight to speak of on the front of this uh, given the very light weight of this overall tractor. Now, one thing worth mentioning is I built this on this really feeble lawn tractor, really. Uh, the, the transaxle is not strong. The entire frame is rather thin and the overall weight of this machine is super light. So I wouldn't expect this to be able to do anything other than what I needed, which is moving around wood chips. Here's another example of a very tight fit. The brake needs to be able to operate and it just gets past the, the cross arm here and just get, uh, fits beneath the, beneath the cylinder and uh, the tower here. Since I didn't know how I was going to mount the pump when I was ordering all the parts, I ended up getting one of these link belts. That turned out to be a good idea. Uh, I wasn't sure if I needed to have an idler pulley or how I would end up making this work. One thing I did run into that was a problem is if this belt is not tight enough, because I guess there's less friction on the backside of these link belts, uh, it ended up slipping under heavy load, which I, I thought was air in the cylinders, it wasn't. It just ended up being that under load, this would end up spinning. One of the weakest links on this tractor is going to be these three quarter inch uh, spindles for the front wheels. Those are not able to hold very much weight and I expect that to be a problem. I've cut out some pieces so that I can make a cross brace on there, but other folks build completely new spindles to solve that problem. I happen to already have an assembly for one of the Craftsman's snow plows that attaches onto the frame. That was necessary in order to build a mount for the cross brace for the towers. But of course on the PF engineering plans, there is another way of mounting. He's specifically writing up those plans for his Cub Cadet. Uh, so I hadn't seen a lot of people doing Craftsman. Double check your measurements before you drill or cut. That seems obvious, but as I got toward the end of this project, I was hurrying maybe more than I should have. And now I have some extra holes. Although this bucket is made out of some pretty thin gauge material, it still is a pain in the ass to bend. So when I did the bending, I ended up having to cut out a groove before using a homemade brake to get that to bend. It wasn't pretty, but in the end, I got it bent right and got it welded up and I think it'll hold. This weight mount was a bit of a kludge. I didn't want to have to cast weight when each of these, these blocks is 33 pounds and costs $1.50. I, I thought there has to be some way I can just use regular old cinder blocks in order to make this happen. Uh, so that's what I did. I had some angle iron hanging out uh, from an old steel pallet and I was able to reuse that scrap. I also was able to use something that was completely not designed for this purpose, but the mount for the bagger actually does attach with some fairly stout steel off to the frame. Uh, I then have a cross brace here that also pushes against the frame, and I'm hoping that that does the job. Uh, so far, it seems okay. It does have a bit of wobble, but not too much. 
So that should do the trick. I don't have to hold these in here in any way. They're, there's enough of a tight tolerance that they don't seem to move around much. I can get a total of 10 blocks at 33 pounds each, so 330 pounds plus the weight of this the steel. Another thing, when I put this together, the steering was actually quite difficult, especially with those larger uh, ag tires. Uh, I ended up on these smaller wheels, so that has less rubber on the ground. And I also put thrust bearings underneath these, uh, these spindles, and that really made a big difference in turning. As it turns out, this whole thing is very heavy, and getting it off and back on is a pain in the butt. Following the PF engineering plans, I actually didn't have enough width to fit everything on here and had to end up cutting out from the little foot deck here. Not ideal, but it works. I ended up tapping into this, um, whatever this is, 3 8 inch uh, uh, rectangular tube, and that seems to be just fine. Um, I could put a nut underneath here, but I haven't done that. Um, I think mostly the load is carrying down through here and uh, the, the cross brace is critically important to put the weight back on the frame and keep a lot of the torquing and twisting from happening. In my case, one of the problems is, although I can get to these bolts, the two bolts here, and remove them, uh, and obviously I can remove the cross brace, getting this entire tower assembly off is a massive pain. Um, it will not come off with the arms still on here. So I, ha so I have to uh, disconnect from the top of the boom arms, remove the whole loader, remove these cylinders, and then I'm free to take these off. Uh, I also blindly went through with the bill of materials from PF Engineering and ordered the parts. Now, he includes all of the hydraulic fittings in that bill of materials. That didn't end up working out for me because uh, the cylinders that I bought happened to be uh, 3 8 inch NPT rather than uh, SAE O-ring. That's another thing that I learned is sort of the differences between those different types. Uh, off here on my valve, these are all SAE O-ring fittings, um, and then I needed to adapt that to uh, NPT. Um, the rest of this entire thing is, is NPT. Now, things that I've done wrong here are, I shouldn't be using this, there's this one piece here, I shouldn't be using this black pipe on the pressure side, uh, but I am, that's what I was able to get to fit, that's what I had. Uh, and buying another one of these, these giant hoses was, was not in the cards. As someone who's never done this, working with hydraulics is a pain in the ass, and ended up leaking hydraulic fluid for just about everything that I needed to do. Uh, when I thought there was air, I would loosen something up, oil would come out all over. Uh, in my case, filling up my tank was much easier than I think for some. So I have on the return to the tank from the valve, uh, I'm able to disconnect that and fill the tank up, which will get me all the way up to here. I still have this fill cap here, which is nice, but I'm not sure that a 90 degree is the right answer because it's so easy to get backed up when trying to fill that, um, that it ends up, you have to pour it very, very slowly. And there's no real good way to know how full you are. 